you know, obviously when you're talking about Christianity, it, it has its foundations in Christ and, you know, who lived 2,000 years ago. But in the years after he lived, there were a lot of thoughts and, and kind of putting together what is this Christian faith? You know, you've got Paul's writings, you've got Peter's writings, you've got John's writings. And then uh, the, just the next couple hundred years, people are sorting out what is Christianity? How do we formulate that? How do we live that way? And often we look to the church fathers to figure out what things meant. And one of those church fathers we want to talk about today is, is Basil. Uh, who is Basil and kind of why should we listen to what he has to say? Yeah, uh, Basil, uh, known as Basil the Great or Basil of Caesarea, uh, is, is actually a doctor in the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, doctor as in surgeon type thing, or no, does, I assume no, that has a different that. meaning. <laughs> yeah, no, it, he's a teacher of the highest level. Uh, that uh, There's only 33 people in the history of the church that have earned this. And basically a doctor is set apart from other teachers because their writings have been deemed uh, useful uh, in, in time and place beyond their own. So it's not like... So rather than me writing something that is kind of relevant to today's culture, Basil, because he's a doctor, has written stuff that's relevant to all cultures yeah. over the last yeah. thousands of years. So. Right. And he, he, even, he wasn't even granted that honor until about well over a thousand years after his death. So you can tell that... Okay, so yeah. he's, he's got some intellectual firepower that it's worth listening to what he has yes. to say. What, what else do we know about Basil? Uh, well, he... He came from a very spiritual family, a very strong Christian uh, family. He had like six, seven, eight, nine brothers and sisters, correct? Yeah, nine or ten, somewhere nine in that ten, range. Okay. And, and five of them were saints. It's pretty spectacular. Uh, so, so not only does he have an intellectual heritage, he's got a pretty strong spiritual heritage oh, as well. very much so. so. Yes, yes. I, I assume Basil was one of those saints as well? Yes, he's okay. among those five, yeah. And, and so, I, and I know he also, obviously, he's one of the church fathers, so he plays a role in what does Christianity have to say? Where, where does his role come in in the early church writings and uh, the creeds, those sorts of things? Okay, yeah. He, he lived in the fourth century. Uh, somewhere around 330 he's born, he dies, 379. And uh, this is about the time that a lot, some of the creeds of the church are becoming set. Uh, the Nicene Creed, 325. Okay. Uh, it, it was still fairly young at this point. And actually, in his day, uh, a heretical teaching called Arianism was actually the, winning and doing better than uh, what we would call Orthodox, Orthodox teaching Christian. today. Yeah. yeah, and that's the idea where Christ is somehow not part of the Godhead. He's sort of subservient or created, correct? And yeah, so, there was a time when the Son was not, right. something like that. Yes. So th th this is where the Nicene Creed would come in and kind of saying, no, this is not who Christ is, that God is the Trinity, that, you know, establishing these important Christian doctrines. Yes, yes. And so Basil was an important part of that, correct? Right, he helped, even though he wasn't there at the Council of Nicaea, he wasn't quite born yet, he helped to give Nicene Orthodoxy firepower again in a climate where Arian heresies were actually winning and converting more people out of the barbarian tribes, and they were, they were growing much faster. And had it not been for Basil and men like him, uh, Nicene Orthodoxy may not have survived. So, so we've got Basil, who's one of these church fathers who has an incredible academic uh, intellectual credentials. He's got uh, profound spiritual credentials in uh, just his family and in his work. And he's also one of these people who is critical in establishing what the church has to say. So, you know, in my generation, you talk about E.F. Hutton, somebody that needs to be listened to. Maybe you could go in and say, you know, if Einstein says something scientifically, he may not be right, but it's certainly something you need to pay very close attention to. And Basil, when he speaks about what Christianity has to say, we need to take serious note. 